No, uh, prominent um, male dominated sport and audience. There we go. You have the English words. I don't. I'm from Norway, so I'm oh, struggling. Silly sometimes. Europeans. Yes, indeed. So we are on Circuit Breaker, a very interesting map, and in the bottom left corner from Team Axiom, we have Crank. And at the top left, in the red Zerg, we have Axiom Impact. I'm very, very pumped for this uh, match because they both played quite a bit of Starbo. Impact making it to the finals in the Axiom in-house Starbo tournament, which Innovation won. Uh, Crank casting that uh, term tournament and has shown incredible skill in Starbo. He's one of the first programmers to try Starbo of the programmers who have tried it. Uh, and he did ladder a little bit once he got that working and he is on, I think it's 26 and 3 or something like that. An incredible, and one of those wins are versus RSVP. So he hasn't been meeting bad people, let's just put it that way. Uh, oh man, <laughs> I know Impact hasn't played as much Starbo as Crank. Crank has played quite a bit of Starbo. He has. So I, I would say Impact is the underdog in this match. Mm -hmm. Crank, one of the fan. F I think Crank is actually one of the favorites to win this whole tournament. We don't really know how well he is compared to Innovation because he didn't play in that in house tournament that they had. He was casting it instead. Uh, on Circuit Breaker, the starting positions are very different uh, in, in relation to rush distances. Uh, the start positions they have now is actually the distance where they are closest to each other. Uh, so this will be very difficult for Zerg as the rush distance area is very close for Protoss to put on pressure. Uh, Zerg might just want to try and be aggressive in this position. And we do have the Forge first into a Nexus. Fast expand. While Impact is just struggling to get his... Okay, there's the, there's the drone micro to kill that probe. Okay. Oh, is there we go. <laughs> Finally getting the hatch so right down. It's incredible. Because drones in Brood War had like one range. They had a range attack and they could do like a moving shot. So it's so much easier to deal with that. That's true. Um, we see Crank though, interestingly actually, going for Forge to expand because Gateway expand has been more and more popular in Starbo and seeing the rush distance on this map, a few early zealots can actually do a lot of damage, but he's going for the safer more standard Forge Expand, so that's interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, at first, the meta was just really gateway-oriented at first, and then, you know, just it developed kind of like Brood War did, when it used to be like one base Protoss all the time, until they figured out, okay, how safe can I be and still like put on aggression against Zerg? And it's so important to put on some sort of aggression against Zerg as a Protoss player. Yes, Protoss needs to be the... He's the aggressor by default. If you play Protoss and you sit on two bases and do nothing versus Zerg, he's going to take about seven or eight bases and just kill you. So, well, yeah, and it, it's, it's weird because, I mean, you have to be both safe and aggress. So, uh, you'll do things like with Corsairs, DTs, or Reaver drops, uh, or just really fast timing attacks with Zealots. December Scum! We have a Hydra that incoming already. Not surprised. <laughs> it's gonna be two base Hydra. Oh man, that's a fast Hydra den. He's gonna. It, oh. You see, I was kind of worried about the group play stages taking a long time, and I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> well, Crank might see this. No, it's gonna get denied by that queen. Very annoying. Nice moving that queen over there. You know, Crank hasn't seen a third base. He should suspect something like this is coming. The two base Hydra pressure will kill any Protoss who doesn't know that it's coming and is not prepared for it. Unless you are very, very good. And Crank is very, very good. And he also hasn't seen the third base. And he should be getting some more cannons soon as a respond to that. No layer on the way. Mm -hmm. He's getting range before speed on these Hydras, which means that it's going to be a little bit of a delay. No, well, he's well, what you do is if you're busting a wall, you get range first because it doesn't matter. You don't need a micro against Zealots because you have enough That's Hydras true. to just kill them. Um, so true. you get range so that you can actually chip away the wall so much easier with those Hydras. Cranks and then your probe mass is also better. Crank's probe did see those hydra early Hydras, and he's mm -hmm. throwing down a ton of cannons now. He wants, to tech he wants to tech towards... Oh, I was going to say Templar to get a DT, but he has an Overseer with this. His impact is doing... I'm almost calling this a cheese, but it's a very effective it's, cheese. And it's, it's something that... Cheese. It's It's, it's something that Protoss players should, you know, 
be prepared for. It's trying to go in and snipe the cannons. Sniping cannons, not that difficult in uh, Starbow, and the Caldarian uh, Citadel is not up yet, so he cannot chrono boost the cannons. Now he does, but it's too late. Ooh! Chrono and now you see why preemptively. That, yeah, and now you see why that, that range on the Hydras is just so damn effective. Why does he keep chrono boosting cannons when they are out of range of hydralisks? Chrono boosting cannons make them shoot faster, but it doesn't make them shoot that well, long. Well, they could come in at any second and just snipe That's cannons one after another, and then at that point, Crank is just dead. It's true. So. He just needs to keep the hydras away for as long as possible until he mm -hmm. can get zealot speed and enough zealots out to actually pressure. With this hydro force and so back, impact so. is transitioning to lair tech. So I might expect him to be doing something like straight into lurkers, trying to go he, for that contain play. Yep. Perhaps he's not taking a third. He's finally taking a third. So there's this transition. <laughs> so this this hydra pressure took down a forge, took down a gate, uh, forced a lot of cannons out, forced a lot of chrono kind of out sit too. back in his base. It's interesting how much chrono boost it forged, forced out. This will actually slow down Crank's upgrades and technology. Um, and it's funny how the curse is that every time you say he's not taking a base, it always happens. So yeah. But uh, <laughs> yep, Lurker Den is coming out. But at the same time, we do have Twilight, uh, the Templar archives out of Crank, uh, that will help him bust out against Hydra Lurker. Yes, this, he can't see the lurkers, but he can storm them, and he can he can have a good idea where they are from the attack animation. And Ooh, here comes the uh, the zealots, and he's just chasing the hydras away. He sees that mm -hmm. you know what I got enough zealots to do this now. Yeah. But Luckily the, the hydras impact, will retreat. Help. There's no free hits in this game. Uh, like will charge will like just give you free hits while they're retreating. Quite a bit harder to do that. Well, and they, they are faster. <laughs> So they could get some free hits that way. Critical mass of Hydra comes back, swinging the pendulum back the other way towards Crank. So yeah, we're gonna have this little dance back and forth now. As long as there's only Hydras and Zealots, whoever has the most units is the one who wants to be aggressive. And you want to have the dance of the Hydralisks to avoid the blades of the Zealots. More gateways incoming. Crank trying to macro as to the best of his abilities. Now we have High Templars, Storm is on the way. As soon as he has high energy High Templars with Storm, he can push. If you notice also, uh, Brood War upgrades and Starbo upgrades, they take a long time. They are significant S uh, investments. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will, uh, and, and we have uh, Impact uh, morphing lurkers on the high ground here and he will be trying to go for that contain play. I think yeah. it's not a lot of lurkers. He's getting himself supply blocked, and that's the only reason not. He's in poor overlords incoming. So hopefully he can get those overlords up, and he has a lot of gas to make at least six more lurkers. The lurkers were a little bit hidden out of the way. Now they're coming in, and Crank just isn't prepared for it. He does have the Rebo finally coming down. Uh, but, but he's not going to lose to this because... No. He's not going to lose this because he has so many cannons, he has so many High Templars, but, it's keeping uh, him but he cannot get out of his base either. Third hatch goes down, Overseer's going to see all the tech out of Crank. Archon finally killing that Overseer. I don't know why he made an Archon, to be honest, because that is too wasted. Uh, um, Mutus? <laughs> uh, I mean Just High Templars. Just in case, Mutus. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't have Corsairs. That. Um, we do have the Observer Den coming out, so as soon as he's got his Observer out, he's going to be ready to push. The Warp Prism's going to come in, and this is going to let him do some Storm Dropping. Alright, lots of Lurkers on field. This is heavy emphasis on the Lurkers. Ooh. Impact trying to poke a little bit, but a Storm denies that. He baits out a Storm, though, which is nice, but it's going to take a while for this Hydras to heal up again. We have, I heard the sound of a war prism. It's so far to the left of the screen that I almost can't see it, but we have two High Templars and two Zealots incoming. There are Overlords to spot this. Will he pull out the workers in time? That is the question. Let's Lots see. <laughs> And, and here comes at least an enraged queen and a couple of hydralists, but it's not enough to take down this war prism. And here comes the storm on the war oh. <laughs> Forkers are not being pulled out. It's hard to say. Oh man, I don't know who. A lot of drones lost oh. at the same time. Lost that war prism immediately. Lost those two, two Templars as well. Ooh, Dragoons trying to be a little bit bold here, but Dragoons are a little bit stupid as well. So well, he, he just got his range. The range is about to finish, so now he'll be able to kind of poke away at those Lurkers. 
and just clear them out one by one. Uh, he's got to be careful against the Hydras, because those could come up really quickly and, and pop those goons. Well, I like how he storms one one the Lurker, and as it is, uh, as it is unborrowing to get out of the storm, he, he snipes it with a mm -hmm. Dragoon. Ooh, he got the Observer! That oh. means I can't <laughs> have anything else. <laughs> Nice little snipe from Impact there, and Impact trying to take the rest of the map in the meantime, but now a new Observer is incoming, and Crank is going to push this small contain away. Ooh, it's breaking out the of there. are coming. No, the Scourges are not paying attention. Or nope, and those could have gotten another Observer, and that would have been really annoying from Crank's perspective. Oh, it's so much fun to do that as a Zerg player. It's the best thing in the world. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> 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 oh, another Scourge trying to get the Observer, but no, he needs to protect this Observer for his dear oh, life. That army there are is still huge. more Lurkers and a whole lot of Overlords for impact. Wow. Uh, sorry, I just kind of... That Mutas incoming through the up. bottom left, there's no Archons! They're denying the well, natural. there was an Archon, but that is pro yeah, that's in the main army, so the Mutalisk will be nine mining for a while. In the meantime, Crank is attacking the main force of Impact, but Impact is driving him back. So right now, Crank just has to sit back and try and defend versus the Mutalisks. Oh, man. Another attack oh, from Crank, though. He wants forward. to push across these bridges. It's going to be very difficult with that nice concave of Hydralisks and Lurkers. <gasps> no storms left. And only the really weak to the goon. do not do well without nope. Zealot and Storm support. And that's this is the danger if you use too many of your storms on trying to kill those lurkers instead of just letting your goons do it eventually, then you risk losing to this sort of fight where there's just uh, too many hydras left. Ooh, and there's one lurker very smartly placed there that's killed a lot of workers who are trying to go and take third bases for Crank. He's finally killing it off now, but this has been very annoying, and Impact making a lot of smart de decisions in this game, I feel, and actually showing Crank that, you know what, I can play Starbo too. Yeah, man, he played Brood War as a professional, so that experience sticks with you. Yeah, and... Yeah, you can see that happening, and he also, like I said earlier, made it really well in the in in-house uh, tournament for Axiom, and his experience is showing for. I would say he's way ahead in this game now. Two bases up. Here comes the big push with Hydra Lurker. There's very little left for Crank, and this might just be it. December's come. Uh, yeah, no storms left. He's building up energy for Storm right now. That's his last hope. Is just he's if he had the most the amazing storms again. Oh, and those were not the storms that he would need to take this back from the brink of destruction. There's just too much economy. Well played by Impact.